Hello guys, what is going on? Back again with another review. Today I have here the Blackview A80, not the A80 Pro. This is the more budget friendly A80. This will run you down for around 100 bucks, but I was able to snag this for around $60. And for that we have Android 10 Go, 6.217 ATI IPS, B notch display, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, a nice beefy 4200 mAh battery, 5 and 13 megapixel Sony sensor, and <sighs> the MediaTek 6737. <sighs> And the reason I react that way is because it's the same chip that's used in the Yulfo Note 8P. And if you saw that review, you'd know that, that that phone is very slow. And maybe this will be better. Who knows? So we have a nice little presentation here. I got the blue gradient color. And this color looks really nice. Yeah, the back does feel pretty cheap. But yeah, the whole phone actually feels cheap and light. But we do have a fingerprint sensor, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Yeah, this, this actually feels like a sticker. Okay, it's not. I don't know what they put here, it feels like some sort of permanent sticker. It feels bad, I don't know why they did it. <laughs> what was Blackview thinking? We have our thank you letter, which he copied from Yumidigi. Some sort of um, thing here. Okay, here we have our same ejector tool, our pamphlet, and our typical charging brick feels pretty weak. This is for you tech heads if you really care about that. And our micro USB cable. That is all we get in the box, now let's power it on. It's not powering on, Ugh, don't tell me this phone arrived dead as well. This is a non-removable back, so I'm gonna have to connect it to a charger real quick. All right, so I managed to power it on. I kept in the charger for like 10 minutes, and normally then it powered on. I don't know why these phones arrive completely dead. Could it be that it has to do with the MediaTek 6737 chip? Because the previous phone I reviewed that also had that chip also arrived dead, so who knows? Anyway, first impressions as this play looks quite nice. Viewing angles are quite good as well. And yeah, I'm gonna set this up and get back to you. By the way guys, um, if you ever buy a cheap phone like this and you wanna connect to Wi-Fi during the phone setup process, don't. Because this is what happens. You're gonna be stuck on this screen for ages, ages. Like before when I tried to connect to Wi-Fi, I was stuck on like this for like five, 10 minutes. I mean, most phones it's not gonna happen, but the cheaper phones, this does tend to happen. I don't know why, so. If, you start, if you're stuck like this, don't worry, you can just go back, skip, and continue your setup process as you normally would. All right, this is the fingerprint setup. It is all right over here on the back. So let's try it out. All right, the fingerprint sensor is recessed into the phone. So that is good news. It's gonna be easy to find. Okay, finger move too fast, no problem. And there we go. And here we go, the phone is all set up. We do have that shit, which is pretty annoying, I gotta admit. But for the price win, what do you expect? The, this is overall a nice display. Unfortunately, I will not be able to test battery life, but just know we got a 4200 mAh battery. Battery life is gonna be decent. I mean, definitely better than my Note 20 Ultra, which is Exynos. And by the way, guys, we're gonna have a battery life review of this phone in a few days. This one over here, so yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, a first impressions, um, very similar to the Note 8P in terms of software, but it does seem a bit faster overall. First off, let's test that fingerprint sensor. Three, two, one. Nothing happened, three, two, one. Oh, okay. That was very slow, it started a second. Three, two, one. Wow. Okay, let's lock it because I saw like the charging animation before. Three, two, one, and. Nothing happened. Three, two, one. Nothing's happening. Okay, now we see a charging animation as if the phone was off, but it is not off. We just. Did the phone seriously turn off somehow? Let's unplug this, see what... Nope. Phone did not turn off. 
Okay, so I guess when the phone's charging, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have this animation, which might be annoying at night, but you can just flip it around. Not a big deal. So let's just try without the charger, because I think it's affecting the fingerprint unlock. So three, two, one. Okay, now it's a bit better. Three, two, one. There's a very slight vibration when you, when you attempt to use the fingerprint sensor, but it's so subtle you can't even tell if, if it failed or not. So there, now it's better. And it worked. But it's very slow. Okay, let's try this again. Three, two, one. That was okay, that was better. Three, two, one. Failed. Three, two, one. Failed. Three, two, one. Okay. So it could also be because of the way I set it up. Maybe it was incorrectly, I don't know. The way it's gonna work really depends on the way you set up your fingerprint and how you decide to do it. If you wanna set up the same fingerprint twice, that usually helps. But yeah, um, overall, you know, phone is still pretty slow. It's not even doing any difficult tasks in the background. Like it already installed the two apps I wanted to and um, swiping is a pain, look at that. Settings. Oh my god, this phone. Why are they using this chip? I do not know. Face unlock, face unlock. Okay, we have face unlock. We're gonna set that up real quick. Twan. Okay, it's working. There you go. Now, does it work? Let's t let's try it out. Three, two, one. Okay, it's stuck on this uh, animation again. Okay, three, two, one. That was very slow. I'm gonna try it close up. See if it if there's a difference. Three, two, one. Nope, the exact same speed. We're gonna do that one more time. That was a bit better, but yeah, face unlock is, oh, it's pretty slow. The glitch where I lock the phone and the uh, charging animation appears, I don't know what's up with that, but now for now it's not doing anything, so. All right, let's try a knife hit, I guess. on come on come on play you have got to be kidding me oh, it, oh my god hey finally oh my you oh my god Oh Jesus! It's I think I think it's the ads that are making it lag this much. So yeah, that's the that's a bit it's a bit better now, but oh my god, it's still unplayable. Why is this phone so? What? What? Oh no! My power bank, my power bank died. Hold on guys, you guys are not gonna believe what's powering this phone now. It is the one and only Geotel G1 with a USB-A adapter on the back. And I bought a new power bank and I can't find where it is, so screw it. All right, so so knife it was completely unplayable. Let's see how Windrider is. Uh, didn't even touch anything. And oh my God, it's so laggy. I mean, the frame rate itself isn't Oh my god, it's pretty bad, but the problem is the problem is the in the touch input it's lagging as well. So yeah, I mean it is playable but not enjoyable at all. Yeah, I was gonna die right here. And yet, this one is not for gaming. Don't buy it for gaming. Not even gonna test PUBG. Let's move on. The browsing experience in YouTube and on the web. I mean, it's not that bad. Nothing compared to gaming, so when you're actually in an app like YouTube, you can scroll around and all that. And yeah, it stutters all the way through, but it's not that bad.
Okay, so the speaker isn't that bad. I mean, it, there's a lack of quality, but there's no distortion or anything like that. It's just missing some bass. Not that good quality speaker, but yeah, I mean, it's decent. All right, let's try the camera. Where are you at, camera? There you are. Okay, for a selfie, here we go. Let's go outside. Seven twenty P video on the black view A eighty. Uh it doesn't look too good. The pictures however are pretty decent. Um you know I'm just walking around. The video on my end doesn't look really good for the phone itself, you know, the viewfinder. And yeah, that is the video, 720p. Front facing video on the black view A eighty. This is only 480p, it's not um even HD. Um there you go, we can walk like this. And doesn't look too good. My on the phone looks fine, but I'm sure on the computer as I'm editing the video, I'm gonna be like, oh wow, this video is not good at all. Nope, it's decent actually. So yeah, that's the front facing video. Okay guys, that is pretty much it. So should you get this phone? Uh, no. I mean, for most people, no, it's a no-go. It's very slow, it's not good for gaming. It barely handles basic tasks. Like, this is just opening the Play Store. I mean, it works. I mean, for basic, the most basic tasks, it does work, but it is pretty slow. Like, I've been using this phone for a while, and usually these phones take a while to warm up, that I know. But regardless, this phone is gonna drive you crazy. I mean, for basic, Okay, now it's actually faster, you see? But, you know, I just think for $100, you can buy a phone that's way better. I don't think you're getting what you pay for. And don't go in the comments like, Hey, what do you expect for $100? <laughs> I keep getting these comments. These people are not watching my videos. So annoying. And also, when I say a phone is slow or it's bad to use, I'm not saying it because I expected something better for the price. I'm saying it because I want you guys to know what to expect if you were ever to buy this phone. Like... It would be pretty dishonest of me to just try and cover up the fact that it's slow or not mention it at all. And when you buy the phone, you're like, oh my god, it's so slow, why didn't you say anything? So, I don't know why these people get so mad when I just tell the truth. I mean, that's what I try to do. I try to show how it's like to use the phone on a daily basis, even though I'm not going to be using it on, on a daily basis because it's torture. But I just want you guys to know that it's slow. I mean, it's really slow. So when I say that, it's too tell you guys what to expect it's not because i want to bash the phone or anything like that so yeah that's pretty much it i've tested phones cheaper than this and they work better all right i i reviewed hundreds of phones so i know what i'm talking about for basic tasks like browsing and phone calls the phone's gonna work just fine just no heavy tasks it might drive you crazy here and there now that it's running a bit faster let's see how knife it does now Yeah, it's still lagging, so yeah. It lagged a lot in the beginning because it takes a while to settle, especially after you just set it up, but even now, it's pretty slow. I mean, yeah, this shouldn't be anyone's main device. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.